Hey, this is YBR with Night Vision. So this is a game that I really don't know too much about. I played with it just a little bit to say, yeah, this is interesting and unique. Let's make a video for it. So there are two modes. We have Story and Sandbox. We're going to focus on Story mode right now, and then maybe we'll take a look at Sandbox in a future video. So first off, we got to choose our transmission and car color. Car color, got to be yellow. Yellow cars are always a great option, and that is a great shade of yellow right there and then we have the transmission of automatic or manual i was using automatic before and it seemed like it worked perfectly fine so i'm not going to bother using manual and now we're going to begin the story and the game does have a story it starts off with a phone call well one thing about the phone call though is it's very very hard to hear what they're actually saying on the phone but you can easily hear what your character's saying so i'm going to repeat everything that's said on the phone so it's easier for you to hear it because when i was listening to it the character was blowing my ear out and the person on the phone, I could just barely hear. So right now the phone is saying, ring a ding, 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 ding. I did promise to say everything the phone says, so I gotta say ring a ding, 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 ding. What do you want? You never call me. Yeah, well, you never write me back, jerk. I never write because all you do is message me cat pics. I have no response to that. They're cute. I thought you'd like them. Maybe it's a cry for help. Anyway, did mom make you call me? No, we just thought you ought to know, but don't worry. Everything's okay. Nobody ever calls up to say, don't worry. Everything's fine. What's going on? It's going downhill fast. They say it could be any time and that he probably won't make it until morning. Oh. Um. All right. I'm on my way. Jonathan, you shouldn't be driving this late. That's why you didn't want to tell me, huh? Don't worry about me. It's not safe. You can't make it anyway. You should stay there and... No, you're not changing my mind. Fine, but be careful. Yeah, yeah, I'll drive safe. See you later. Well, let's see if I can beat my time. So this is the road we're going to drive, apparently. It looks more daunting than the Nürburgring. That is just an absurd looking road. And here we are driving in our car. You can see the choice of car does make a difference because the car is yellow. And it really just drops you into driving. You're in a rush to go and get to the destination. There's no time for anything else. And in the bottom right, there's the clock, which also sometimes tells you things like speed up. But there's no specific time you're racing against. And it doesn't tell you how close you are to actually losing. It's just if you're going slow, it yells at you a little bit. So it's kind of like an internal thought in your head where you need to get there as fast as possible and you know when you're driving slow. Otherwise, it's just a clock that tells you whatever time it is in the game. I should also mention, almost always when I record a video for a game, I try to keep the graphic settings at the default brightness and such. But with this game being so dark, I decided to pretty much max out the brightness because when you upload a video that's really dark, the encoding that YouTube does makes it really hard to see what's going on, so it needs that extra brightness for you guys, the viewer, to be able to tell what's going on. It probably ends up being about comparable to what I would see with the default brightness, but it's just one of those things where you have to mention it because usually I don't touch the brightness because I want it to be a representation of exactly what the game is set to when you get it. This is an exception because if I uploaded the regular footage, it would appear darker on YouTube than it actually is. So now we got another cutscene coming at you. I don't even know if I can make it in time, but I'm going to try. I have to try. It's going to be close. At least there's hardly anyone on this stretch. I know I didn't really mention much when we were doing that drive. I'll mention a lot more during this drive. That one was just the backdrop for what we were doing, because that's kind of the intro level where there's not that much interesting going on. But I noticed the farther you get, it just builds up and builds up and the driving becomes more and more difficult. So now we have traffic on the road as the cutscene. And for the most part, they're not too bad. Unless it's in the middle of a corner, then they can be kind of a pain to avoid. And also they shine your lights so badly. So you know what I should also show you is what happens when you crash. Because yes, you can crash and there's the moon. And we're upside down. And now we have completely ruined the car. And when you do that, you get this thing that says, this is just a memory. And it looks like if you click this, it just resets you at the start of this road. You have, I want to remember this drive, which I don't know what it actually does. You click it and then it just disappears. And you could just choose this is just a memory still, or I guess I couldn't make it, which brings you back to the main menu and saves your progress. So we're going to restart this. And this time we're going to do it without crashing the car. 
at least not intentionally. We can still crash it unintentionally for sure, but we're not going to do it on purpose. And if you guys are interested enough in this game, maybe we'll play it enough where we figure out what that other button does because I just don't know what it does. But also, I haven't really looked into it and tried to figure out what it does. I clicked it once and it just disappeared, so I'm like, huh, that button does absolutely nothing as far as I'm concerned. Let's go back to driving. So we have a car coming up on the right side, and it's a lot nicer passing them on the right side because they don't blind you. When you pass them with them on the left side, they will hit the mirror on your left side and it absolutely blinds you as you saw earlier and I'll make sure to point it out again the next time we pass a car with them being on the left side. You can also kind of blind yourself with the headlights if you look at a cliff directly but most of the time you won't be doing that because you're driving on a road not trying to drive into the cliff. And the driving physics in this game, the car feels pretty well planted. It's not sliding around a lot. You have control over the vehicle and it's only going to slide if you start doing ridiculous driving at speeds that are way too high. So here's a car coming up on the left side and bam, there's the blinding light on the left. Uh, thankfully though, our head was turned a little bit to the right because you also notice when we're turning left and right, our head turns as well, which helps simulate what angle the car is actually traveling compared to what angle it's pointed. And it works good enough for that, fully in my view, so that wasn't too terribly blinding. Eventually though, we will get blinded and you will know when it happens because you will also get blinded just as bad as me. What is that in the air over there? What in the world? Wait, okay, something just glitched out because I think somehow there was supposed to be a truck in the traffic and they shot up into space for some reason. Like you gotta wind that back real quick to see what was going on, but it looks like a truck glitched flying into the air and then by the time I got to them, they landed on the ground way off to the left of the road that was really really weird or maybe it was supposed to do that and it's the aliens trying to abduct a vehicle nobody really knows for sure oh so there we are we have now completed another level and we got the truck driving by too so that's kind of neat just seeing the truck driving oh you can actually even hear them just a little bit because my volume's still stupid high that moon tonight it's like it's pulling on me Possibly big, possibly heavy. At least there's some light on the road. You say that, but the only time I remember actually seeing the moon was when we were flipping upside down. I don't think that's the best way to take a look at the moon. Like right here, we're driving around. I don't see no moon at all. Maybe it's covered by the clouds or something, but either way, I don't see it. So I don't know why we're talking about it so much. Instead, we need to be talking about the fact that I'm swerving all over the road right there. And while we're talking about the road, let me tell you about the road. So I'm pretty sure the road we are driving on is randomly generated. That includes the road itself and the terrain around us. And it seems to have a pretty good variety to it. So when you look around, sometimes you have areas where it's nice and flat on the outside. Other times you have it where it's nice and tall, like you're seeing there. And the road we're driving on, my experience with it so far is you have a lot of elevation change sometimes, then sometimes it's a lot more flat. And most of the time you're going to have corners where you don't need to slow down. I've had one corner I felt like I actually needed to slow down. And really, the most deadly thing on the road is the blind crests. So you don't know what's over a bump in the road. And what happens is, is right over the bump, there's a churn. So like right here, there'd be a churn to the left or right. And you're just a little bit into the air, a little unstable. And you might completely blow by that section. Thankfully, right there, it was nice and straight, which made things very, very easy. Also, as we're driving through, the speed limit is always 75, which is kind of absurd to me. That was bad. It looked like my car got airborne and then like got caught in the rocks or something. But yeah, the speed limit's always 75, which seems like it'd be way too fast for this kind of road normally. Like you have these blind things like that and you gotta hug the right side a little bit to make sure you don't fly off of it. If I hugged the left side there, I would have been off the road. I got lucky that I made the right choice. I think though if you hit restart, it will put you on the exact same road that you're driving on so you can kind of remember, okay, for this randomly generated section, on that big bump, I need to hug to the left or the right. And then they also have a sandbox mode as well. And with that one, you can configure the road to whatever you want so you can change like how curvy it is, the elevation, the number of cars, and it'll tell you how difficult it thinks it is. And then you can share the randomly generated road with other people so they could drive on it as well. But for me, I'm more interested in the story mode. And I want to know what happens when you get to the end of the road. Do we make it in time? Are we too late? 
Those are the questions I must find the answers for. And I really feel like we have to be coming up to the end of the road soon. We've been driving for a while, it feels like. It's funny, as you drive, the more you do, the more stressed you get. Because at the start, it's, it's not too bad, I'll just restart. But after you've been driving for a couple minutes, like I don't want to lose this progress. And the longer and longer, the more progress you're going to lose. So far, so good, though. No, no, stop doing that. That's like the third time I've done that on this section. It's a miracle that I haven't crashed so far. And I'm getting a little too close again. I could slow down. The problem is I don't know how slow we can go. So it's pretty much flooring it all the time and never touching the brakes ever. Here's a fun question for you guys. What kind of car do you think my guy is driving? Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay. Well, we lost like 10 miles per hour, but we're okay. And we finally made it. Woo. That was scary and sketchy as heck, but we made it. I need a breather after that, man, for real. Gaining elevation now. The road's gonna start winding more, but it's nothing I can't handle, even at these speeds. Probably. I notice the dude sounds tired. He sounds like he's gonna fall asleep, and he's just started on the journey, basically. It's 1 a.m. I'm assuming by the time we get there, it'd be like 6 a.m. and the sun is starting to shine or something. That really sounds like it would be hell to try to do in real life. You're tired, you're going double the speed limit on windy roads with elevation changes that are randomly generated that you've never driven on before. Okay, there's no such thing as randomly generated roads in real life, but it's basically the equivalent of roads you've never driven on before. I'm all over the place again. That's like as sideways as I've ever gotten the car there. I didn't know what was gonna happen. I've never actually tried to drift it, but I guess it looks something like that. Now going back to what I was talking about earlier though, what kind of car do you think this guy is driving? So I'll let you guys listen to the engine and see if that might give you some hint, but I honestly have no clue what kind of car this is supposed to be. It's so hard to tell because all you can see is the dash and a little bit of the hood and the mirrors. And I let that clip go a little bit longer than I normally would just because I wanted to also let you guys hear the music as well. And it's not like I need to tell you to listen to it because it's there. You can't not listen to it when you're listening to the engine. Ooh, that was a lot of light in the center mirror. That's another thing. And most of the time you actually can't see the mirror in the center. Like if you're driving perfectly straight like I'm doing right now about, you don't see anything from it. But if you're doing a hard maneuver, you will see that center mirror and you can get blinded really hard from that mirror. That was a big blinder. That's what I was mentioning earlier at the start where it's really bad sometimes from the left side of the car. And oh, I don't like that at all. I can't see nothing in front of me with the darkness and that bump. So I think the clouds do change their position or something like that. And then there's less light from the moon. So it's harder to see what's in front of you. Or maybe it's like your eyes are adjusting from the lights of the other cars. I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but definitely it feels like sometimes you can see very far ahead of you. And other times you can only see 20 feet ahead of you and you have no idea what's coming up. And I'm playing this game kind of funny because even though I have the brightness up higher than I normally would, I still have my nose right up to the monitor to see as far ahead as I possibly can because I really feel like it's helping if I do that compared to what I usually would do which is sitting back in my chair and being all relaxed. No, we're face first at the screen making sure we can see every detail possible. I wasn't doing it earlier because I didn't feel like I needed to but it's definitely beneficial to do this. Probably really bad for my back but you know what? If that's the difference between crashing and not crashing it will be worth it. And one thing I just thought about is I never really pay attention to what kind of car the traffic is driving. So that guy is a green pickup truck and we're going to see what kind of variety there is. I know there are big rigs as well, but I don't know if there are multiple different traffic cars in addition to just truck and pickup truck. Let's see, what is this guy? That was an SUV it looked like or it could also have been a pickup truck. We're going pretty fast so sometimes things like that are hard to tell because I'm also trying to make sure I don't fly off of the road. Like that's priority number one is stay on the road. Priority number two is, hey, what's that dude driving? And we got a dude just up there who we'll take a peek at. So what are you driving? Looks like a van. So there is 
a decent variety of vehicles. That is nice. What is this guy up here driving? He's driving up. I don't know. It might have been a car, but I really couldn't tell before it said, you made it. And I should just be happy because I made it, shouldn't I? But I want to know what that car was. Great. Now the wind's picking up. It's always something. As if tonight was already smooth sailing. Also, one thing I've noticed is the time doesn't properly match up with real time. So it's 1.17 a.m., but it's not actually been playing for an hour and 17 minutes. So here's something fun you can do. This is pro driving mode where you can't tell where you're going. I think we're completely off the road. We're just bumping and bouncing. Oh, this is going terribly. Uh, the problem here is I leaned back for the cutscene. I wasn't looking real closely at the road. So that was definitely just a memory. Let me try this one more time. And this time, I'm going to turn the lights off and get my nose to the screen so I can hopefully see just enough of the road where I can actually drive like that. I don't think there's any benefit to doing this, but it is fun. And also, you can see what the guy said is true. There's all kinds of dust and stuff in front of the car, making it even harder to see. So this is just a stupid, stupid idea. We're never doing that again. I proved that it's possible, but don't do it. It'll probably cause you to go blind doing stupid things like that. Also, here's something fun. There are high beams as well, but I don't know if there's any downside to using them, so I'm kind of afraid to even use them. Like, I don't know if there's a timer specifically for how long you can use them before the lights blow out or something, or maybe it takes some power from the car to do that. I never really looked into it, but I can see good enough with the headlights, so I don't need to worry about it. Like, right now, I actually have great visibility, even with all the dust everywhere. And I don't think you can actually feel the wind kicking up the dust. I think it just kicks up the dust. And playing this game, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of an old story I think was from Top Gear where Jeremy Clarkson was saying he actually really likes the Porsche 924. And it was because it was something like his father was in a hospital and it was many miles away. And he drove that thing as fast as it could possibly go. And because he had a fast enough car, he was able to get there before his father passed away and he was able to have just a little bit of time with him to say goodbye. That's what it reminds me of because it's basically the same idea. We have somebody in the hospital, we're trying to get there as fast as we possibly can to hopefully see them maybe before they pass away. And another thing I've noticed about this game is in most racing games, I'm not looking as far ahead as I possibly can. I'm just focused on what's directly in front of me. But with this one, I'm always trying to look as far ahead as I possibly can so I know what the road's going to do and I know what's coming up. And it's just, it's kind of unusual because I'm not paying attention to like a speedometer or a tachometer or anything like that. I'm just flooring it and looking off into the horizon so I can see what's coming up and hopefully it'll stop me from crashing. Ooh, and right there, that dust is really kicking up. My visibility was garbage. The dust is interesting because it really varies how much you can see here. Super clear and then sometimes not so clear. Anyways, we have once again made it. And that one again, there was no traffic. So we'll do one more section and then we'll be done. It's the desert. There's dust. No big deal. What worries me is that it usually means something else is on the way. Hopefully my luck holds out. I know what the something else is. Thanks to the foreshadowing in the game. You remember that truck who flew in the air? It was aliens. The aliens were abducting the truck and now I'm going to get abducted as well. That's the something else we got to watch out for. Or maybe just the truck glitched and it flew in the air because of a glitch. But that doesn't sound very fun. Like a glitch is the boring answer. Oh yeah, it was a glitch. It doesn't mean anything. No, I like the answer of it's the aliens abducting people who are driving cars at night. Much more interesting. Well, so far. There's no traffic or anything still. It's still an empty road without anyone but me and all of the dust in the world. And as I was saying, sometimes visibility really bad. Like right there it was bad. And then here it's pretty good, pretty good. And eventually it'll get bad again. I just want to point out when it gets specifically pretty bad, it's getting a little worse. But actually we have pretty clear visibility right now. I like that. There's no dust. There's a little bit. All right. The dust ain't so bad after all. I complain too much. Maybe it's a little bit lighter in this section. Like the other section was the dust zone. This one's a little bit of, oh my goodness, it's raining. Well, there is wipers, so we can press the right shoulder to do that. And that doesn't seem to help much at all. My dude, you need Rain-X. 
Oh, this is terrible. Everything is so blurry. The one positive is the water in the air makes it where no more dust is kicking up because it's busy being mud now, but I don't like this. I don't know if this is going to change the way the car drives because I have not actually driven this far in the game before. And oh, good. There's lightning too and thunder because that was loud. And it's throwing all of this at me. And we're like, what? An eighth of the way? Maybe a sixth of the way there? Are we going to have volcanoes erupting later? How much worse can this possibly get? Oh my goodness. We are flying. Oh. Whoa. It had like that Call of Duty, everything goes red kind of look to it. It keeps doing it, but we somehow survived. Oh my goodness. Wow. I, I am really shocked it let me keep driving after that because before I recorded this video, I did some experimenting to see just how crazy could you go off-roading. And every time I did anything about that dangerous, it just said your car has crashed. That was a miracle. There's lightning again. That's going to kill me one time. I'm going to be going over a crest, then I'm going to get blinded, and before you know it, oh, I'm upside down somehow. Woo-wee. This game is actually, like, very, very stressful. Normally, I am very chill when I'm playing a game. I say, it's not mad. It's a video game, man. But this game's getting to me. It really can't to me. It's like, I gotta not crash this car for my father who's in the hospital. Or was it mother? I legitimately can't remember what the intro said. I also noticed in addition to the screen lighting up bright white, you can actually see the lightning off in the distance streaking sometimes. So if you pay close attention, well, I was going to say when it happens, but the streaking happens before the screen goes bright white. Or maybe it's during? I didn't see it that time, but I definitely saw it on the previous one. You can rewind the video and see it for sure. Being honest, the one thing I don't like about the rain is the wipers don't seem to do enough. Like you can see they actually get rid of the water and leave it where there's a beaded spot below the wipers. But I wish they did more for how hard it looks like it's raining. Like, it looks like it's pouring out there, but it doesn't look like it's that wet on the actual windshield. And we should be coming to the end at any moment, it feels like. We've been driving for quite a while. Yeah, I'm psychic. That was actually including the little off-road section. That's why I felt like it was taking longer, because I lost a lot of speed doing that dumb stuff. I always get excited when the hills rise up around me, and I know the mountain road is coming. Knowing the speed I'll need to maintain tonight, those butterflies have me a little uneasy. Oh no, I don't like that at all. But I don't have to drive that, at least right now, because that's going to be the end for this video. Until next time, this has been YBR, and remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by how dark it is in this game. The answer is it's very dark. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time.